are still crazy things going on in Chernobyl to this day, decades after the explosion of the reactor at the nuclear power plant in April 1986. Now, animals and nature have rightfully been affected in a big way. According to a study that began in 1991, the organisms responsible for decomposition and replenishing organic matter back into the ecosystem, such as insects, fungi, and microbes, are presenting symptoms of radioactive contamination, which isn't too shocking, but still isn't good. One of the most prominent areas of this effect has been called the Bloody Red Forest. It's a set of woodland where all the pine trees trees turned a blood red color right after the meltdown and then died not long after. Now it's pretty, don't get me wrong, but it's completely unnatural and has caused some issues. Now 15 to 20 years after they were exposed to radiation and died, these trees were not decaying, when at this point normal trees would be long gone. Due to this, scientists decided to run some tests by filling specially prepared garbage bags with leaf litter from uncontaminated areas, making sure there were no insects or decomposers present, and then leaving the bags out in both contaminated and uncontaminated wooded areas in the exclusion zone for nearly a year to check the decomposition rates of the leaves. Now, bags left in uncontaminated areas were as expected with normal rates of decomposition between 70 to 90 percent of the leaves decomposing. But the leaves in contaminated areas retained 60 percent of their original weight, indicating much less activity by natural decomposers. Now, this suggests that the radiation exposure has a detrimental effect on the ability of the Chernobyl ecosystem to replenish itself with nutrients, which could be causing the stunting of tree growth that has been recorded. But with this comes another problem. The leaves in contaminated areas stayed intact and dry even after almost a year, and this could present a fire hazard, which in turn presents a danger of radioactive contaminants being spread outside the exclusion zone by forest fires. So that is scary and just not good at all. Then there's how this affected all the animals. According to a 2011 study in biological conservation, Chernobyl caused genetic mutations in plants and animals increased by a factor of 20. Among breeding birds in that region, rare species suffered disproportionate effects from the explosion's radiation compared to common species. Now, further research is needed to understand how the increased mutations affect species' reproductive rates, population size, genetic diversity, and other survival factors, but it definitely affected animals in a negative way. In 2016, a study found that the eastern tree frogs in the Chernobyl exclusion zone exhibited different characteristics than their neighboring cousins, and in 2023, another study discovered distinct genetic differences between Chernobyl dogs and dogs living only 10 miles away in Chernobyl City. Now, not all the animals living around Chernobyl are entirely wild, as there are around 900 stray dogs, mostly descended from those left behind when people evacuated the area. Veterinarians radiation experts and volunteers from a group called the Dogs of Chernobyl captured the dogs, vaccinated them against diseases, and tagged them. Now, In addition to the tags, some dogs are fitted with radiation detector collars. Now, The dogs offer a way to map radiation across the Chernobyl exclusion zone and study the ongoing effects of the accident. While scientists generally can't get a close look at individual wild animals in the zone, they can monitor the dogs closely. And they are, of course, radioactive. Video Visitors to the area are advised to avoid petting the dogs to minimize radiation exposure, no matter how cute they are. Now, these dogs have increased rates of cataracts because the eyes are the first tissues to show signs of chronic exposure to ionizing radiation. Now, not all is lost on these dogs, though, as the unique genetic diversity of these dogs makes them ideal candidates for future studies, seeking to understand the long term genetic health effects of highly radioactive environments on populations of large mammals animals, especially in understanding the biological underpinnings of human survival in regions of high and continuous environmental assault, the researchers said. So I, I guess that's a plus. Then there's the birds. While there are plenty of them in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, 489 different species to be exact, they are examples of animals that still face problems from radiation exposure. A study of barn swallows from 1991 to 2006 indicated birds in the exclusion zone displayed more abnormalities than birds from a controlled sample, including deformed beaks, albinistic feathers, bent tail feathers, and deformed air sacs. Now, birds in the zone had less reproductive success 
nest, and these birds often had smaller brains, malformed sperm, and cataracts, presumably as a result of radiation related genetic mutations. Now, if you are already scared of spiders, these ones will freak you out even more. The spiders here are radioactive as they build their webs to catch their prey. They add to the dangerous environment of the forest. These webs are not like normal spider webs. In fact, they are woven in abstract ways that suggest genetic mutation is at hand. Now, they're also highly radioactive themselves, making them a danger for any non-radioactive animal to touch. Now, who knew spiders could get 100 times scarier? But that's not the only scary mutated animal there. According to Slate in the early 90s, which was just a few years after the incident, radiation levels in the wild boar that died near Chernobyl were more than 2,000 times what's considered safe. And even today, eating animals from inside the exclusion zone is still pretty hazardous, as a person might be exposed to radiation levels that are dozens of times higher than what's safe. Then in 2016, a video went viral of a catfish swimming around the cooling pond of the Chernobyl Chernobyl power plant. Very, very few mutations lead to extra large size, explains University of South Carolina radiation specialist Dr. Timothy Masu. Instead, they grow less efficiently, they're less capable of catching food, and they tend to not live as long. Now, that's why it's shocking that it's so large, and I would not want to mess with the fish that big. Then, as of 2015, there had been almost 20,000 cases of thyroid cancer reported in people who were exposed at the time of the incident. In a Approximately 5,000 of these thyroid cancers are likely attributed to them drinking fresh milk containing radioactive iodine from cows that had eaten contaminated grass in the first few weeks following the incident. Yep, you heard that right. The cows created radioactive milk. Now, in 2018, it was said that Ukraine still has radioactivity levels up to five times the official safe limit, research suggests. Now, scientists sampled cow's milk from private farms and homes in the ravine region, about 120. 25 miles away from the site of the catastrophic explosion. Researchers found levels of radioactive casium in milk above Ukraine's safe limit for adults of 100 becquerel per liter at six of 14 settlements studied. Now, the highest levels found were about 500 BQ liter, five times over the limit for adults, and more than 12 times that for the young. The study was carried out at the University of Exeter and the Ukrainian Institute of Agricultural Radiology. More than 30 years after the Chernobyl disaster, people are still routinely exposed to radioactive casium when consuming locally produced staple foods, including milk, in Chernobyl-affected areas in Ukraine, said Dr. Irina Lembanska of University of Exeter. Though the level of soil contamination in the studied areas is not extremely high, radioactive casium continues to accumulate in milk and other foods. Now, This is just one of the lasting effects, which is horrific. On a lighter note though, an endangered wild horse is making a comeback thanks to Chernobyl. The Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute called the Chevalsky's horses the last truly wild horse. Its once large population that ranged across large areas of Asia and Europe was eventually reduced to almost nothing. When Lee Boyd and Catherine A. Hope edited a book about the animal in 1994, the most recent wild sighting had occurred in the late 60s, leading the authors to declare them extinct in the wild. But British ecologists Mike Wood and Nick Beresford, who specialize in studying the effects of radiation on Chernobyl's wildlife, observed that the Shilvensky's horses is thriving within the exclusion zone. In the late 1990s, about 30 of these horses were released in the Ukrainian side of the zone, and the population has increased to more than 200. Based on camera trap images, Wood estimated that some of the original horses, identified by their brand markings, are still alive, and photos of juvenile horses also indicate that the population is expanding. Banding. And finally, if you didn't know, Earth has both a magnetic field and an atmosphere that protects us from dangerous radiation. Now, NASA knows that astronauts on the International Space Station get exposed to 20 times the radiation we get down here on the planet. So, after discovering that a fungus thriving around the heavily radiated Chernobyl disaster site consumes radiation through radiosynthesis, they decided to experiment with it in space. And over the course of a month, they found out that the fungus actually blocks radiation literally by eating it. The experiments on the ISS revealed that it was utilizing melanin to transform radioactive gamma rays into chemical energy. Now, This is actually really exciting because this ability may turn out to be useful in future space exploration. NASA is hoping that the fungus may be used to both shield equipment and the crew from deadly radiation during long space flights, and even more importantly, help clean up radioactive waste. 
Well, that's all for our list of unsettling creatures found in Chernobyl that won't stop growing. Now, what on our list shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. I'm your host, Emily, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you.